Hi there and welcome back to Creighton Steamworks. Today we're talking about a special engine to the society. This is actually the first Leica that was delivered to the society way back in 1969. Now, it's a bit of an unusual Leica. It's a Kerr Stewart kind of Hunslet crossover diesel. Now this was made in 1929, so quite early on in diesel technology. And this one absolutely shows that. Now we're gonna have a little bit of a walk around and uh, show you a bit more about it. So as you can see from the engine plate, it's uh, the number starts with a K. Now that is to denote its Kia Stewart origins, although it was actually finished off by Hunslet. So it is a Hunslet engine, but with the K suffix on it, so that everybody knew what it was. As you can see from inside the cab, you've got the handbrake lever right next to your fuel tank. Um, you know, it's a pretty dangerous place to be in there and there's not a lot of space. So it's, uh, I can't imagine this was ever fun to drive in any way, shape or form. 1929, when Keir Stewart were still their own company, uh, excuse the noise that's going on outside, there's a bit of construction work. Uh, but yes, they were their own company and they were developing 040s and 060s. The 060s had no problem at all and they were sold in the normal way and lived very happy lives until they were destroyed. The 040s on the other hand were a bit more of an issue. I'm not entirely sure why, but they spent a long time in development. So long, in fact, that by that time, Hunslet had bought them out in 1930. Um, now they carried on and got the things out by 1932, I believe, or late 1932. From there, they went to the Air Ministry at Cranbrook, at Cranbury, I do believe. Um, now they were only there for a month, probably because they were pretty rubbish and got sent back. Um, from there, they were sent to a Brickworks and they spent a bit of time there and that Brickworks was eventually taken over by Redland Cement and it got moved around a couple of their sites uh, before eventually coming here. Now, I can't imagine Redland had much joy with this thing because it is an absolute nightmare of a thing to start. I mean, as you've already seen inside or might, might not have seen yet, but you will see inside this thing, it is weird. Now, the engine is normal in this now because it has been replaced from its original Daimler-Benz engine um, in about 1946, I believe, for a standard rust and lump. So it, it really is a proper Frankenstein motor. Um, but yeah, it literally looks like somebody phoned up and was like, yeah, yeah, build me a, you're a, di you're a steam engineer? Yeah, yeah, I'm a steam engineer. Cool, build me a diesel engine. Here's what it looks like, because it's, it's bizarre. Uh, but the starting procedure for this was ridiculous. Now, we'll see if we can get Frank to explain that to you because he is one of the few people here that was here when they started the thing up. But apparently it could take like 40 minutes to get this thing going. Yeah, I know, crazy. So as you can see, it's a chain-driven vehicle. Um, a bit more advanced than the uh, Brill Loco, but still a train-driven vehicle nonetheless. Uh, this was quite a common thing even later on in diesels. Um, some of the later diesels that we've got are chain driven. Um, as you can see, the pretty rusty, uh, rusted engine in there is, um, yeah, pretty much ready for a rebuild, but that's not going to happen. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the backside to start. It hasn't got much pulling power. It's got no vacuum brakes. Um, it's better in the museum as a bit of a curiosity. What do I rate this engine? Quirk, I mean, on a top trump scale, quirkiness and weirdness, it's probably an eight or a nine. Uh, usefulness, two. I mean, it can, you know, it is a train. Well, the Brills are one. I mean, the thing fell off the track constantly. This is probably more of like two, maybe three stroke usefulness. Um, is it a beautiful engine? Absolutely not. It's pretty but ugly, let's be honest. It's, uh, it's not that nice. I mean, some of you diesel fanatics may go, that's right up my street. And that's, that's all well and good. It would be a very boring world if we all like the same stuff. Um, but no, it's, it's a brilliant piece of history that deserves to be preserved. Um, I don't think there's any more around, mainly because it's awful. Um, so uh, yeah. But Frank will be able to tell you a little bit more about how awful this thing was in real life. <laughs> so Redland Diesel, um, 
like a lot of diesels of its age and of its vintage, is air start. Um, and it has a petrol engine driven compressor. And you had to get, I believe, I can't remember exactly, but it's either 300 or 500 psi in the air reservoir, which stands in the cab. And when we first had it, and for most of its working period that I remember it, the petrol compressor engine was not very clever at starting. Fortunately, one of the members who was here in the early days, he was a London transport um, bus mechanic, and he'd seen all this sort of thing before. And the trick was, particularly in the cold weather, was to take the spark plug out, warm the spark plug with a blow lamp or on top of the stove in the brake van, and while the spark plug was out, put a small quantity of petrol tipped into the bore. Um, and I mean a small quantity, it would be a tablespoonful or a little bit more. And then light that and wind the engine over. And that produced enough heat in the engine, um, by which time the plug was warm, screw the plug back in, put the cap back on it, and then at the end, then the compressor engine would start and that had to run I'm not really sure probably 50, 10 15 minutes to produce enough air for the main for the main engine to turn the main engine over um, the engine the main engine had to be pulled over with a with a bar in the flywheel to get it in the correct position for starting so you did that while the thing was pumping air up assuming you've done all that you've got the throttle open um, when you've got enough air, there was a valve on, on the side of the air reservoir and crank that open, get it open as fast as possible so you got the maximum amount of air into the engine and with a bit of luck it would start. If it didn't and it turned over sluggishly and think, right, that's not going to start, shut the air off, go away, have a cup of tea and let it build up more air and try again. But when it, you know it was um, not something you started, but you didn't turn it off until you'd really made sure you'd finished. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> yeah, so so that was it. And in the winter months as well, I remember um, holding a flare up. So by a flare, this was a, a piece of wood or steel with some burning rag around it, rag dipped in paraffin, lit. And you'd hold it up to the air, air intake of the diesel while it was cranking over on the air. And that would encourage the diesel engine to fire a bit quicker. Mm. So it was all very basic stuff. <laughs> well, thanks again for watching. If you've liked what you've seen, please uh, like and subscribe. We're very nearly at 1,000 subscribers. So every little bit you can do to you know, pass it on to your friends, family, force them to watch it, force them to subscribe. Subscribe on their behalf so they don't even know. You know, it's all helpful. Thanks a lot. <laughs>